So as well as looking at real fossils, I'm also interested in trying to understand what extinct creatures were like as living animals. And one way to do that is to create um, digital computer models. You can control all sorts of features in them, like their density and their shape and their proportions. And you can do experiments on the computer to see, could extinct animals from the past do things that people have suggested, like could they swim, could they jump, how fast could they run, how strong were their bones, things like that. But to have anybody believe what I say about extinct things, I also have to be able to show that my methods work for living animals. So I've developed a whole series of models for large mammals and living reptiles today to test my methods, and I can show people my method works, and then I use the same method for the extinct things. So I'm going to show you an example of flotation and buoyancy and stability um, in, in animals. I'm going to start with the alligator, because that's my test animal. And then I want to show you what I find for Spinosaurus. People want Spinosaurus to be this aquatic swimming dinosaur, but there's a whole bunch of problems with it. And I'm going to show you here one of the problems with when you put Spinosaurus in water. So I'm going to show you the, the 3D alligator model first. So here's a view of my static uh, alligator model. It's a full three-dimensional mesh, and I've assigned different tissue densities to different parts of the body. Um, the average density of an animal is about one gram per cubic centimeter, which is the same as water. But to properly simulate a real, a real animal, you need to include some air spaces, and this is a lung. And this lung volume is based on observations of real alligators, and it represents about eight or nine percent of the, act, the total body volume. And so I can calculate all sorts of forces that are acting on individual slices or within slices to say what would happen if you put this model into water and what forces are acting on it and how will it balance and how will it become stable. So this is my simulation of the, the alligator model. What happens when you put it in water? I, I, I like to imagine I've held it underwater with my hands and I tip the head down, take my hands away really quickly and what happens? Buoyant forces are lifting it up. This is with a full lung and you can see at the final stage at around frame 20, 21, you can see the dry surface at the top and, and the darker wet surface. And so I've published this in a, in a scientific journal and it shows that people were happy that my method can accurately represent what a floating alligator looks like at the surface of the water. So if I couldn't show this for the alligator, people wouldn't believe what I said for dinosaurs. Here's my Spinosaurus model. And so there's been talk that Spinosaurus was an aquatic, uh, fully aquatic swimming, diving dinosaur, a first, and it's very unusual. I developed this three, 3D model based on the most recent uh, reconstructions. Again, I put a lung in there to, to make sure that it was a proper animal. And also theropod dinosaurs have systems of air sacs throughout their bodies, starting from just behind the hips and running all the way forward into the neck. And that air displaces tissue and makes these animals very light. And so you have to wonder what happens when you put a really light animal in water? Is it going to float or is it going to sink? Spinosaurus floats like a cork. This is with, it, with full lungs. The people that want Spinosaurus to be a swimming diving dinosaur want the animal to stay underwater swimming at a constant depth. But I've even deflated the lung down by 60% and it, this animal still floats. It's because of the system of air sacs in their bodies that Spinosaurus could not stay underwater without great effort. And there's another problem, I won't show it here, but it actually rolls over onto its side, it's unstable. And I've also done, as a check, I've also developed a 3D model of an emperor penguin, which is a very aquatic theropod, but it still has to come onto land. And I can simulate what a floating penguin does perfectly accurately. And I think that should give you confidence that what I predict for the Spinosaurus um, is, is reasonable. With my computing and math skills, I can maybe go beyond the bones a bit and, and try and understand more about what these animals were like as, as living animals.